What's up? This is Tom. We are going to talk about my updated prospect list in just a moment, but I want to share this fun little tidbit from Enosaurus of The Athletic. Stuff Plus, if you don't know what it is, look it up. It's basically just a measurement of pitcher stuff. Uh, take this with a grain of salt, but still very exciting to see that Johan Duran and Josh Winder are numbers one and three in this metric across spring training so far. Now, Again, like he says in the tweet, this is minimum 40 pitches. You usually want a three to 400 pitch sample is what he's saying. So that's one caveat. Number two, not all the ballparks have stat cast tracking set up in them. So maybe there are some guys that would be factored in here that just haven't pitched enough in a stat track cast tracking ballpark. However, I still thought that this was very fun and definitely worth sharing. Um, so I kind of thought that was a fun way to kick off our prospect talk here. And part of the reason I say that is because we're going to actually kind of tailor this to a big league impact conversation as well, instead of just talking about the prospect list. And there's a few reasons behind that. Number one, um, you know, I did my end of the year list in October, and I did that with the intention of not really messing with that too much between then and opening day, because I didn't want to feel like, you know, a bunch of the national lists or, or, or whatever were influencing my list too much. So I wanted to get that out right away. And then, you know, have that be my list for all of the offseason, basically. Uh, so only very slight updates I made to my list. In addition, you know, got to get Ronnie Henriquez in there. Uh, so we will go through a couple of those real quick. But then I want to talk about this. That What's intriguing to me about this system? Um, so, you know, just kind of want to mention I have a couple guys highlighted. Josh Winder is a guy that I have elevated up from. I had him 10th. I've moved him up to 6th. You know, he ended last year injured, and I was concerned about how he might get out of that, how he might look, how he might progress. Uh, he's looked fantastic. And, you know, a lot of these pitchers to me were kind of very, very close in ranking. So, you know, even though I had him 10th, it's not like I had him all that far behind those guys. So I've elevated him up to sixth. Um, I know some lists have him as high as fourth. So I think that was fan graphs. So nothing too crazy there. Um, Ronnie Henriquez was the guy that they acquired in the Mitch Garver uh, trade with Texas. Uh, so I had to add him in. He was a guy who wouldn't have been there in the last list. So I've slotted him at 11th, which at the time I kind of said, like my knee jerk reaction was that it feels like he probably should slot in somewhere around Cole Sands. That's where I, he's ended up. One guy that I faded and it's not because of anything that he's done since October. It's just, I, I've thought about it more and considered more about, I, I'm more concerned about his strikeouts than I was before. And that's Matt Walner. I uh, still have him 12th. So it's not like I've, think his his uh, status is completely cratered. I'm just taking into account a little bit more of the strike. I mean, the power is amazing. His production has been great. Usually when that's the case, I'm like, hey, if you strike out a bunch, you strike out a bunch. If As long as you're producing, that's that's uh, really all that matters at the end of the day. Uh, but I am, I am starting to be a little bit more concerned than I was uh, that he has had such a high strikeout rate at such a low level of his career thus far. Uh, so hopefully he can tailor that in. Again, still 12th, so it's not like I'm, I'm completely – uh, dumping him. And then I kind of want to highlight in gold, Marco Raya, because he has been the prospect with the most steam, I feel like, uh, this offseason. I'm going to keep him where I, basically I had him before um, because I personally don't feel like I've learned enough or seen enough from him to elevate him. So I'm fine with that being the low person on him right now. Um, and if I were to elevate him, it would be just because, you know, people who I think are really smart have him higher. <laughs> so that's why I put out that list in October to try to kind of avoid that a little bit because you know, every list should be a little different anyway. So I wanted to highlight him though, as the biggest pop-up prospect of this off season and make sure to touch on that, that he's a guy that a lot of people have in the, in the 10 to 15 range, uh, now. So very exciting, obviously, you know, in addition with adding, uh, Henriquez, Chase Petty is no longer in this mix. That was one of the guys who I had above Josh Winder too, so that sort of helped him move it up as well. Uh, he, of course, went to the Reds in the Sunday Gray trade. Um, so what is with the rest of this? You know, this column here, we had, that's my October ranking of everybody. You can see what's changed, not a whole lot with most of these guys. And then these last two columns, have they reached the high minors? And if they have, I put which level that they topped out at their age, and then are they on the 40-man roster? And the reason why I wanted to point that out and to talk about this, and this is usually not a thing that you would talk about with like a prospect list because it's completely separate from talking about the big club, but I think this is a really unique thing with this system is that it is so ready to go. Um, how often do you see a system that has 
almost the entire top 10, having played in the high minors and being on the 40 man roster. Uh, you don't see that very often. And I know Matt Cantorino kind of sticks out as a guy who's not on those two things, but he's 24. Uh, so it's not like, you know, the Twins might strap a rocket to that guy and he might be in the big leagues this year. I wouldn't shock me if Matt Cantorino was pitching out of the bullpen at the end of the year for the Twins. Um, so this, you know, obviously, number one, uh, it's nice because this gives the Twins a lot of potential reinforcements for 2022 uh, let alone just the future. We're talking about now with these guys. And number two, I would imagine that all of these guys would look very attractive to a lot of teams in a trade. Um, so this is really, you know, talk about how this Twins front office loves flexibility. This system is just another piece of that to them. Um, they can, you know, either dip down and and go to these guys for depth, go to these guys if, if somebody gets injured, give these guys opportunities, or end up flipping these guys to make big league upgrades, you know, still could happen before opening day. I'm holding out some hope. You know, we're not there yet, so it could happen. Uh, but it does seem more likely that we're talking about the trade deadline potentially. So yeah, I don't think the twins have like one of the best uh, systems in baseball. I think that would be a tough argument to make, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find another system that has this many guys who are near or are major league ready, basically. Um, so I think that's something really unique about this year's twin system right now. So since we really didn't get into the nitty gritty on this, I didn't feel like we needed to since not a lot changes. I'm going to put a link up in uh, a card here to the uh, original list I did in October that was meant to me basically my 2022 list. So you can kind of check out what the logic was behind some of these rankings. Uh, but thank you for checking this out. We'll talk again soon.